Hello, then welcome back to Roman Empire. Last time I decided that uh, we would annex the uh, great country of Croatia. And the reason is actually really, really simple. I want to have a orthodox vassal in the area, make it easier for the future. And that is what we're going to do. I also realized that Leon does not like me a lot. And uh, <laughs> neither does Granada now. Because they actually do have more than... Uh, they have a high base tax, and that is a problem. Opinion leads to diplomatic reputation. My reputation, diplomatic reputation has gone down? By that much? What happened? Uh, apparently it's not as good as it used to be. It was about 18% before, and that is probably why it's gone up. But as you can see, yeah, Leonis Liberty Desire is actually uh, getting higher. Because it actually factors in all the vassals relative power to leech. So that means that if all the vassals are powerful, which is the case here, they are more inclined for rebellion. And uh, that's a problem. Because that means I need to grow my lands, I need to have bigger armies, and I need to not have as many and as big vassals. But of course it's just going to be a... Uh, it's just going to be a minor setback in the beginning now, to be perfectly honest, because as soon as I keep on growing, my vassals size Leon Granada won't be big at all compared to me so that's it's just a temporary I guess issue that should not be uh, considered a problem now we are going to fight England pretty soon so I'm just going to be moving two armies up to uh, Scotland and Northumberland and again here the goal is to take Ireland and also cut down or cut off England from Scotland in order to potentially get rebels to to rise up and well crush our enemy which in this case will be England. England is also allied with Holland so we don't really have any concern in in terms of the ally which should be easily annexable if I want to. But there we go Croatia has been annexed and this has positive and negative repercussions all in one. For Stalin's as you can see the relative power to liege it has gone down because one of the vassals is gone. One of the well fairly strong ones to be perfectly honest. And uh, my liege diplomatic reputation or my diplomatic reputation took a really severe hit, eight percent. So again, that is actually not stackable. At least it didn't used to be. So if I annex another one I should be fine. In theory. Yes, in theory. So I'll have to look into that, but uh for the time being I'm pretty sure I should be fine. Now I'll keep this army just because there's no good reason to get rid of it right now, which is well fairly alright. Uh, I might go ahead though and add to it, basically create a proper army, and I think I will pretty soon. But again, I I want to annex Serbia, and to do that, we are of course going to ally them. We're going to uh, we're going to become best friends, basically, for a little while. That is, England. We are ready to uh, take calls. In this case, we're going with Ershai as a Casus Belli because we need a Casus Belli. And, uh, well, we don't really need it, but it helps. Uh, there we go. Coalition, Burgundy, Liege, Savoy. So we have a tiny Luxembourg, Nevers, Alsage, so basically Eastern Europe. I need to be ready here to actually clear war in France as soon as truce ends in 19. If not, then things are going to get nasty in terms of the collision. And I thought actually the English troops were to the south, but apparently there's a fair amount of them here to the north, so I need to deal with that. We can do an upgrade of course in military attack, and this military attack upgrade means that I'm going to upgrade my armies into 24k units with uh, basically the same composition, 12-4, but we're going to add 8,000 artillery to make it 24,000 men. So that is what we're going to be doing uh, later. I get new troops, new horses and new uh, cannons. And I believe I also get some modifiers to movement, if I'm not completely mistaken. So, uh, it's going to be interesting this, but again, if I can just block off England, then I can just leave it to Scotland and everyone else to do most of the sieging here. And again, drawn out wars is basically what, I, uh, <laughs> what I've started doing, more so than anything else. I'll not be able to get a diplomatic attack just yet, we'll be waiting with that for, again, safety's sake. And I'm going to be using another 8,000 men here to come and help, and hopefully we can decimate that English army. And it wasn't really that big of a problem, per se. Holland has actually sent an army into England, so that is...
wow, sorry about that. Uh, I just had a coughing attack or something like that. I said cough for a couple of minutes straight there. Uh, but anyways, uh, where was I? Yeah, Holland has actually sent some troops into England, and this is going to be an interesting battle. Uh, yeah, I kind of regret this decision, but even so, against a well, very much so numerical uh, superior superior army, we held our ground. So now we're going to run because we that's what we do. And unfortunately, by actually kicking their ass, I put myself in an awkward position. Uh, no, not really. This could actually work for my advantage if I can just keep the English army in Ireland. Then it's going to become real easy to, for starters, conquer the land. I just need to make four or three thousand even sieging armies and then I can laugh all the way to the bank. So we're going to do just that and we're going to try and quickly siege as much of England as possible. Although I should probably split these two into, again, two thousand men armies, but with Holland messing around, I don't think that is, uh, well, too good of a strategy. We also have the English Royal Navy that we need to kill, but uh, yeah, we actually need to kill that if I want rebels to help with uh, with Scotland. But uh, we'll worry about that later. For now, I'll just allow the siege to continue. As you can see here, the Siege of England, as I like to call it, is actually going really well. Scotland has just taken one province, but uh, we are moving through the provinces actually like, well, wildfire. Uh, probably the best description. And once a sudden... <laughs> Southern England has actually been mostly sieged. I'm probably just going to place my troops in Ayrshire, and then we'll probably just wait, I think. Uh, but I'll have to see. Again, I want to really catch the English fleet and completely destroy it. And the reason for that is actually really, really simple. By doing said act, I'll be able to make sure that for starters, their fleet is gone. And thus, I can hopefully hope for rebels that uh, will come and help out here. Nationalism is going down, everything is going down, national defense, uh, well, it could actually not work out as planned, but we'll see, I'll hope, I'll keep my hopes up. But anyways, uh, the CJ is going very nicely, not really much else to report. Uh, Serbia is currently at war, however, with uh, enemies of the states, or state if you will, and funnily enough, Granada has a peasant war, so this is going to get fun. But uh, once Serbia is out of their war, you will annex them. Burgundy has left the coalition. Burgundy does not exist anymore. That is probably why. Well, I know what is really tempting right now. Burgundy, do you want to return to your former glory? <laughs> but this is actually kind of fun. Lorraine has actually... Lorraine, Champagne, Flanders. It's it's a different Burgundy area. Let's just be honest. We have the Palnate here. That's actually successfully snaked. Bohemia, successfully snaking as well kind of dangerous. Denmark is taking Sweden by force. And Finland is being reduced again. Same can actually be said for Novgorod too, so... It, it looks kind of interesting. It looks kind of interesting. Let's just be honest here. Uh, for now, however, I'll just send my guys back to uh, Ayrshire to, well, start the blocking, if you will. Blockade, call whatever you want. And we'll take that Patriarch Authority to be able to convert faster. And until I'm Basically, I just hit. Uh, how long have I been on, on a 9.99? Well, I have no idea. But we're going to upgrade admin tag to modern theocracy, level 10. Ask another group of ideas and allows a theocracy. I'm still making a lot of money. Anyways, we're also going to upgrade diplomatic tag, allows uh, carrots and caramel, level 9. And with that, we're going to increase the maximum colonial range by 50. Naval morale increased by 20%. Sorry, 0.2. And the maintenance is increased by 20%, as well as Carrax and Caraval, so I'll definitely need to upgrade my fleet. But for now, we need to decide on uh, the idea set. If uh, Do I want to go for religious? I'll basically be able to convert everything I want to, but I don't really need the religious ideas. I get a plus uh, 2 to heretics, hmm. which is basically nothing. So I think in this case, uh, going for quantity, for instance, to again boost my army, Make it basically unbeatable is probably the better idea here. And I don't really see anything else that would be beneficial to me right now. Of course, I'm actually quite ahead in admin tank, admin power too, so I think I'll go quantity again just to build power here, more so than anything else. I can pass the declaration of indulgence, get heretic, uh, but if I don't really want that, 
Uh, I do want the conventicle though, because it means that I can get plus one to missionary strength, and we don't care too much for her. her <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, heretics, not heretics. But uh, yeah, that should that should work. And with that, we'll also change our focus here to military, because we do need to well get the ideas that done. And of course, I'll get national unrest. I'll get minus twenty percent stability. And plus 20 morale to armies, as well as minus 20% to my maintenance modifier. So at the end of this, I'll basically be running the equivalent of a Western European, Western European, uh, well, Russian winter. Let's just go with that. I think that's a fair analogy. Uh, but yeah, Granada has their war here that I'm playing with, which actually is beneficial to me because it means that my vassals are decreasing their power. As you can see here, they're actually less inclined to rebel because trust, for instance, helps. And also the fact here that fully on that opinion apparently. So yeah, I've been boosting the opinion that apparently that works. Works wonders, but uh doesn't really matter. England is basically done for and I'm a little bit again, I'm a little bit unsure how I want to do this, but I think Northumberland will be getting a lot of promises. And I think I'll just leave Ireland as it is right now, and the reason for that is really, really simple. Ireland will most likely rebel out of the English grasp, and as you can see, we already have Irish nationalists. So as long as I just march in now and destroy the English army, I should be, to some degree, fine. And also we have already destroyed most of the English, well, some of their money, if you will. Don't want to lose the ability point, don't want to embrace their reputation. I think we'll embrace reputation. Because it's basically the same as a, well, point in this case. Now, funnily enough here, those armies are all going to get wiped. Or most of them, anyways. Thanks to, basically, the mechanics right now. And that is going to work wonderfully in my favor. Which I love. But again, I'm sacrificing a little bit of manpower. <sighs> my kings have a tendency of dying in battle. Uh, yeah, my king was actually leader of the army. And that is something I currently regret. Uh, but anyways, we do have a region council that will be lasting for five more years. And it's a crap region council. Zero, one, two. So I should probably consolidate here, get Leon annexed. Because basically I don't have a use for Leon any longer. And also most likely then work towards getting Serbia as a vassal. The war with Hungary is basically what I need to keep an eye on. So I think we'll go for an next vassal as soon as the war is over. But uh, for the time being, England is done for, and we'll hand over as much as we can to Cumbria. In this case, it will be, oh, sorry, Northumberland. And in that case, it will be these provinces. Again, it's mostly just to weaken England, more so than anything else. And uh, again, this works as a wonderful way of doing that. Aggressive expansion is not really a concern any longer because I just need to kick England, sorry, France's butt once more. And then we basically have that western border, and then we can just keep on pushing east. I'll probably keep something of the Roman Empire as probably vassals, potential electors for instance, but uh, I'll have to see, I'll have to cut down size on some of these electors to actually, well, force change their religion, which is going to be a brutal affair. But uh, we'll boost our stability here, I think, to plus one, since we will have some peaceful years ahead of us. And let's just go ahead and make this deal with England, because we're not going to be able to get a better deal, let's just be honest. Boom. Northumberland, you have returned. The prodigal son has actually grown bigger. And again, the funniest part about this is England is now basically cutting three. And they do not have any troops to help them. I can form the Italian uh, nation. Do I want to? No. Why would I want to form the <laughs> form Italy? Um, other than that, there's not really much to do. As I said, we're going to annex Leon. And again, it's really, really simple. They are getting powerful, they're getting big, and thus they are potentially at a threat. And that is basically why. Now, diplomatic power-wise, that means that I will not be doing a lot of teching up. And that's just how things are going to have to be, unfortunately. It's just, uh, it's just how things are. But uh, with the integration of Leon, I'll be getting a lot more troops, I'll be getting a lot more powerful, and that is, of course, what matters. I'll be uh, right back. Sorry about that, I had another one of my Kofaramas, or whatever you should call it. Um, uh, we can, however, do an increase in quality here. Sorry, not quality, we're going for quantity. 
And with that we get the minus two to national unrest, thanks to our Roman ideas. And uh, <coughs> we also get uh, plus 50% to national manpower. Which means that I'm basically getting closer to the, well, ultimate state of troops everywhere. And of course that's going to be wonderful once we actually get there. But for the time being, I'll, uh, <coughs> I'll start the annexation of Leon. And I think we're just going to leave it here. With Northumberland basically becoming, well, several times bigger, things are looking good in terms of uh, basically destroying England here. We should be able to do so within two or three wars. And uh, basically Iberia too is, is done for one more war and uh, and it's ours. For France, it's also pretty much one war. And then we have our, well, war area, if you will. I think I'll probably... I think I'll probably set a border like this for the time being. More or less leave uh, most of the Holy Roman Empire on its own. I'm also tempted to try and massalize three electors. Or we'll turn three electors. And basically keep them around as. Uh, as. Uh, basically keep myself as perpetual Holy Roman Emperor because of the. well, fringe benefits here. Technology costs, etc. So uh, we'll have to see if I actually do something with that. But the plan is to vassalize Serbia. This well, first chance I get, and then we'll fight Bosnia, the Ottomans, and basically just now, as I said, all our war. We'll see how it turns out next time. Bye.